Thank you for choosing to listen to today's message by Reverend Dr. David Entry. We know you will be blessed as you seek and serve God. We believe that this message will stir up a desire for more of God, even as you listen. Be blessed. Thank you for the privilege to hear your word. We pray that let's feed us with your word. Feed us with fresh bread, fresh manna from above. Let us hear from you. We thank you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Last two weeks I preached on, I, I spoke about preach the gospel. Someone say preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. And last week I continued preach the gospel. Um, and today I'm going to finish on preaching the gospel as to why should you preach the gospel. I spoke about salvation. The reason why you should preach the gospel, number one, is salvation. Because souls matter. Souls are precious. Let's all say souls are precious. Souls are precious. Jesus said in Matthew 16, 26, what does, it, what do, does a man gain? Or what, what does it profit a man? If he gains the whole world and lose your soul, so that means that if you put the whole world and a soul on the balance, if you put them on this balance, one soul way outweighs every bless, every material thing. Every, all riches you can think of, souls are more important. One soul, so long as God's judgment and God's conversion rate is concerned, <laughs> so long as God's estimation is concerned, soul, one soul is more important, more precious than anything in the world. So he said, what does it profit a man? If you gain the whole world and at the end of the day lose your soul, which is more important than the world. So we preach the gospel because souls, it takes preaching the gospel to save souls. And souls are important. Hallelujah. And I went on to talk about, oh, last week I said, hell is real. Don't wait to get there to realize, oh, I should have listened. It will be too late because you can reverse the clock. You know, when you write an exam and you fail, you can reset it. Yeah. Yeah. But not death. <laughs> if you overspeed and you, your car crashes and you die, you can't say, oh, no, okay, I realize that overspeed is not good, so all right, let me go back. No, it's too late. It's too late. Hell is real. Yeah. Oh, I got a good job. You still die. <laughs> I got a nice house. You still die. World Trade Center, the penthouses, those who be in there, perished. Wealth people. Hell is real. Oh, see, all of these church people are always trying to scare you. Always trying to scare you. I think the people who scare us more are the doctors. Yes. Yes. And the, the, the law. So many things. The experts are the ones who scare us more. But they have to tell us the truth. So hell is real. Health and safety tells us that you shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't. And you have to listen because it may sound scary. They tell you when you are 40, you have to go for a checkup. Because things are beginning to change in your body. Are they scaring you? No, maybe you don't want to hear, but you have to go. In the same way, Oh, they are scaring us with hell. No, we are not scared. We are just telling you the facts. Just that most of the time we don't, some of you don't, some of us here, I'm sure, one or two people, you don't open your brown let envelopes, the letters. You don't open them. Because you know what the bank is about to tell you. You know what the mortgage company is about to tell you. Or you know what uh, uh, HMRC is about to tell you. So for three weeks you haven't opened it. Why? Because you are afraid. But guess what? It will not go away. You have to sort it out. Hell will not go away. Brother, sister, you got to sort that issue out. Hell is real. It's real. Um, my mama told me don't go to fire. You remember. You remember. 
So we have to preach the gospel because hell is real. When we talk about the gospel, some people don't realize that preaching the gospel, do you know the first person to preach the gospel? The first person to preach the gospel is God himself. God. God himself. In what way? Theologians call it proto-evangelion. Proto Evangelion, Proto, Proto, the first is great. Okay, so the first, Evangelion is good news. You, Angelion, Angel is angel. Angel is messenger or news. You, eulogy, good. Evangelion, good news. Proto, first. So Proto Evangelion, Evangelion is the first good news which was preached. It was preached in Genesis chapter 3. God created Adam and Eve, put them in the garden, he told them, oh man, I'm going to Adam. He told them, to don't eat, eat from every tree, but this one, not eat. And Eve, Bible says that Satan, the serpent, beguiled Eve, deceived Eve, who was a type of the church. Wife. That's why I said, wife, submit to your husband. Now listen, I'm not talking about marriage. The actual wife is the church and Christ. As long as we, uh, we remain independent as a church or as the body of Christ, Satan will beguile us. Yes. Yes. He said it. It's in the Bible. Can I, can I go a bit and before I come back? 2 Corinthians chapter 11, sir. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1 and 2. Listen to what he says in the Bible. Verse 2 and 3, I'm sorry. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2 and 3 said, For I am jealous for you with godly jealousy, for I have betrothed you to one husband. This he was writing to the church. He said, church, you are espoused. Sorry, sir. You are betrothed. In a, what does it mean to be espoused, to be betrothed? You have been given into, out to marry to this man. And he said, I have betrothed you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Who is the husband? Christ. Who is the wife? The church. Now look, look at the next verse. See, see. But I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve. It happens to you the same church. So Eve was a type of the church who, who Satan deceived. Because she was not submissive to the husband. A church that is not subject to Christ is bound to be deceived by the devil. Through craftiness, you think things are working. People are, are receiving testimony. So Christ's lessness is okay. The church's strength is... It's submission to Christ. Yeah. Yeah. The church, its strength is in its submission to Christ. Yesterday I spoke about marriage and church. Most of us, when we see the text about marriage, is marital instruction in the Bible, is not purely because of marriage. Because the actual marriage is Christ and the church. And so if you want to see how your marriage must go, Paul said, just look at the way Christ and the church is and learn from husband, learn from Christ, wife, learn from the church. So actually, the relationship between Christ and the church is that of marriage. Oh, I, can't, I, I wish I could preach that thing again. Where God said, it's not good for, oh, it's not good for man to be alone. I'll create, I'll make for him, uh, help me. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. And when he brought uh, Eve to Adam and they got married, Bible says in the verse 14, Genesis 2, 14, God said, therefore a man shall leave his mother and father, and the two shall become one flesh. And then in the, in the book of Ephesians, Paul 
Paul picks up this one, and in Ephesians chapter 5, but where he begins to talk about husbands and wives, husband and uh, wife submit to your husbands, uh, uh, as the church is subject to Christ from verse 22 of Ephesians chapter 5, and then verse 25 talks about husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify her, that he might present her holy and chaste. He said, he who loves his wife loves himself, and then he says that, verse 31 or so, he talks about, therefore, therefore a man for this reason, a man, is it not what God quoted in Genesis chapter 2, 2 verse 24, for this reason, for what reason, marital reason, a man shall leave his mother and father to be joined to his wife that, 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 that thing is what blew my mind, joined, say joined. joined joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh, what's the meaning of that one, how, in what way yesterday I was talking about, about one of these I'll try take my time to go, look at the next verse that is what gets there, he said this is a great mystery but I speak concerning Christ and the church so this thing that we, I'm actually talking about, even though we can, we can deduce something to help our marriage, is actually about Christ and the church. Christ, Adam is a type of Christ. Eve is a type of the church. So when Satan deceived Eve, Satan, can, Satan will always come to the church to deceive the church. We, be, we become vulnerable when we don't submit to Christ. And church now begins to be run through. Church is not a business, it's a body. The church is not just an organization, it's an organism. An organism, the difference between organization and organism is, organization is the amalgamation of different parts different parts together to form one unit. Whilst an, organiz- an organism is the multiplication of one life. So we, an organism, the life is, I'm an organism. The, the life in my toe is, not, is the same as the life in my ear. The same blood, one, li- one shared life. The church, we have one shared life. The Christ in you is the same Christ in me, the same Christ in the, the brothers in China, Christians in China, Christians in America, Christians in Africa. It's the same Christ. It is called the church, and the church is an organism. So organism should be, should, should be taken care of by ministry, service, not by uh, 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 just systems. Right. You can run a government through systems, but you can't run a ministry effectively just through systems. We have become just system driven. It is good to an extent because there can be the uh, gathering of human beings, gathering of people. So there must be some systems. But church, what makes church church is the life of God. It's the life of God in the church. Shout hallelujah. I don't want us to come to church and you you leave church, you have had some good time, but your spirit is still dead. Your spirit is still light off. Power is off. Your spirit is still comatose. Your spirit is still inactive. It is important to have what may look like there's disorder, but spiritually you, are, you, have, turned, you have been switched on to God. You have been turned on to God. We, we, we go out, uh, yesterday Pastor Ho said the, the gentleman she preached to and they prayed for. When they finished, the man said, the, the man felt good, something is different. Something in your spirit. See, this thing is a spiritual thing. We are uh, fundamentally first, we are a spiritual organization for that matter. We are a spiritual organization. So it's so important that we do not just run the church through business principles, but spiritual principles. The fact that you are a manager at work doesn't mean you should be a manager in church. What has that got to do with that? Manager at work, what is that? Two different, two different. There are man- how many of you know there are managers at work, chief executives who are failures at home? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They can't manage their family. Yes. They are always fighting with their wife or their husband. It's not working for them. But you know how to manage a multinational company, but you can't manage a family. Called the principles of management of a family and managing a company, they are different, two different things. Yeah. Back to my text, Genesis, before I go to Eve was beguiled mm. by the devil. Okay. And so, watch this. When two things that happened that you, I want you to know, when they ate, 
of the fruit, the, the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it was major disobedience to God, but it wasn't, what happened to them was not just they have disobeyed God, something else happened to them. Satan checked into their life. They invited Satan, and from that time, something entered humanity, the nature of man. It's called S-I-N. Not S-I-N-S. -S. There are two different things. Sin is a personality. He checked in. That's why some, so many times you don't want to do some things, but you keep doing them. Because something is inside you who is taking reins of your, of your life. You are not free. Addiction. Addiction. Addiction is a function of Satan nature in a man. We all, the flesh is prone to Satan's influence. So if you are not careful, Satan will take advantage of your flesh and take hold of an aspect of your life and you'll be struggling. Anyone here struggling any, under any addiction, I pray that you are free in the name of Jesus. I pray you are free in the name of Jesus. So, Pastor, God comes in, he said, Adam, hi, you want to know this? They ate, and then Genesis chapter 3, let's, let's, let's just do this, then I'll, I'll finish the text. Are, are you really sure you are interested in this? Genesis chapter 3, so it, it, I feel it's going to get good, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's, it's gonna to be amazing. Genesis chapter 3, verse, um, let's take it from verse 12, uh, let's go to verse 12. All right, let's go to 10, so that at least we can have the, from verse 10, uh, all right, verse 9. <laughs> then the Lord God called Adam and said, let's all read it from the screen, let's go loud. Then the Lord. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, louder, okay, let's go loud. Then the Lord God called Adam and said to him, where are you? What did he say, what did he say? Where are you? I can't hear you. Where are you? I can't hear you. Where are you? Ask someone, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Adam was lost. Adam was lost from position. Yeah. Missing from where God was expecting him to be. Wow. Relationship with God had been messed up. Yeah. Lost in sin. And the first thing God will come to you is not judgment. Adam, he got a new day of eating it. He's not coming to judge you. I told you you are under arrest. No, 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 no. He was, first of all, where are you? Where you are is not so, so, supposed to be where you are supposed to be. It's not where you are supposed to be. You are wallowing in sins. Say, come out of sin. Where are you now? You shouldn't be where you are. You shouldn't be where you are. You know it. God is looking for you not to judge you, but to help you. Where are you? It's to shock you to know when God came, these guys, he gave them instruction. Do not eat this thing. Uh, Do not eat this, 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 the fruit of this tree. And they did. And when God came, if it was you, you'd be very upset. Adam. But God came. He said, Adam, where are you? And Adam said, I heard your voice. I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. He said, who told you you are naked? Have you eaten of the tree? Have you eaten from the tree of uh, of which I commanded you that you shouldn't eat? And you know what Adam said? The blame started. Then the man said, "It's my wife. It's my wife. My wife said we should leave." <laughs> My wife said we should ask for a release. Yes. It's my wife. <laughs> he said, then, the woman who you gave me, she made me eat of the tree. And you know what God did? I thought God would say, next time, don't eat of the tree. So he said, Adam, have you eaten of the tree? He said, the woman. Woman. Uh, that, do you look like a woman? <laughs> Come. <laughs> Have you eaten of the tree I asked you to eat? No, it's the woman you oh. gave me. So God didn't do anything to Adam. Mm. He went to the woman. Okay, so woman, who asked you? Is it the woman? What is it? Uh, uh, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me. 
It shouldn't be, shouldn't it follow the progression? Yeah. Why? Why? He went to the serpent, didn't say anything. See what God did. As soon as, so the Lord, so the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. His diet was restricted to something. His movement was restricted. You only crawl on your belly. <laughs> and dust. And that is what theologians call, no, look at the next, verse 15 is the main thing. After I dealt with the devil, and look at what, this is the first gospel preached. proto Evangelion. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and, you see, you see the S here? And her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. The seed God spoke about is talking about Jesus. So instead of God coming to pronounce judgment, you are broken the Ten Commandments, he came to actually preach a good news. Ah. When, when they sinned against God, God didn't come with judgment. He came with good news. So he says that the seed of the woman, it's, in fact, the devil would think, yeah, I spoiled the plan of God. No, he actually paved the way for God to preach the gospel. That the seed, who is Jesus Christ, will bruise your head. So uh, uh, you will bruise his heel and he will crush your head. Bible says that for this reason the Son of Man was, 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 was revealed. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. For this purpose the Son of Man was revealed so he might destroy. He said, who, uh, 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 for this purpose the Son of God was manifested. Why? that he might destroy the works of the devil. He came to destroy the works of the devil. In Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14, he says that since the sons or the brethren are flesh and blood, inasmuch as, inasmuch as then the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared, shared in the same, that through death, by dying, he was destroying something. When Jesus went, to, those, who, those who say Jesus death doesn't matter, they don't know what they are talking about. That through, that through death, Jesus' death, he might destroy him who had the power of death. And who was that? The devil. So that's what the proto evangelion was talking about. That this is about to happen. Galatians 4, 4 says that and in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son, born of the woman. The seed of the woman. Fullness of time, God sent forth his son, born of the woman. Seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent. But the only thing is... I don't, before I move forward, the only thing I want to leave with you is the judgment against the devil was that he would eat dust. Genesis chapter 3, verse 20. Is it verse 20? Um, um, go to verse 19. Because of, uh, yes, that's the, verse 19. In the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread. Uh, you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken. For dust you are. Let's all say that together. For dust you are. Say it again. For dust you are. Who was this referring to? Man. 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 God told man, for dust you are. And what is the devil going to be eating? <laughs> dust. He said, You will eat dust all the way days of your life. Man is dust. If you are not in Christ, watch this. You can be in Christ. Watch this. Watch this. There, what, what's the in, in the life in the in the life of a man, in the life of a human being, in a human's life, what represents dust is your natural your natural self and your soul. So human beings are tripartite, soul, spirit, and body. Your spirit, your soul, and your body means it's equal to dust. Those of us who live purely out of our souls, hey, I like it, it's nice, hey, I'm, this is what I think, and uh, living just purely out of our soul, you are living in the dust realm, and Satan is going to eat you up. 
Those who live, that, check, the reason why marriages fail, Christian marriages fail, is because of the dusting. When you, when you run your family or your marriage based on your feelings, based on your nature, my, my carnality, you, you have allowed Satan to come in because he's authorized. The only, as, the only place in your life Satan cannot have access to is your spirit. Yes. So if you live from your spirit, Satan can't get there. That's why Christians must learn how to turn to the spirit. Live in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Don't walk in the flesh. When you walk in the flesh, Satan got you. It's like you go under the sea to go and fight with a shark because you have been trained to be a very good swimmer. That's, that's, that's their natural habitat. God was the first one to preach the gospel. God is not after your sins. He wants you to live. So when he came, you see, Pastor, organized religion and the religious people has, have created a lot, actually religious Christianity has created a lot of problems for yeah. many people. Mm-hmm. Because religious Christianity is all always about do's and don'ts, ten commandments, you have done this, you haven't done this, you have done this, you haven't done this. But that's not what God, when God came to Adam, he's not, he came to preach. The good news is, Jesus has died for your sins. Yes. Jesus has died for your sins. He has crushed the devil. In fact, in the Romans, it talk, Romans chapter 20, verse 16, it said, and God will crush Satan under your feet shortly. That means that you must operate in the spirit to be above. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Romans, uh, Romans 16, 20. What did I say? Oh, sorry, 16, 20. I'm sorry. There's no Romans 20. Romans 16, 20 says that, and God of peace will crush Satan under your feet. Where? Under your feet. You must be above. The only thing that keeps you above is being in your spirit. Being, living life as a Christian. If you are not a Christian, you can't live by your spirit. Because your spirit is inactive. You are spiritually comatose. You are spiritually inactive. You are spiritually dead. You don't have spiritual life, spirit life. You don't have the zoe of God. Because when man sinned, spiritually we died. So you don't have the connection with God. If you are not... If Jesus hasn't come into your life, that's what it means to be born again. Jesus has come. Born again is not a cliche. Oh, this born again people, this born again people, this born again. It simply means that you have been reborn in the spirit. So you already been, you, you can't be here if never, never, no one gave birth to you. So you are born, but you have to be reborn in the spirit. That's what all it means. It's not some religious jargon. It's a, it's a spiritual reality. Until you are, you see, you either be, you can be, you either be born twice, born now and get born again and die once or you can be born once and then you die twice because you die the first death and the second death lake of fire wow. so you choose wow. I would prefer to be born again now yes. so that I die once then into heaven yes. somebody shout hallelujah Amen. that is that is why we have to preach the gospel because God himself God himself was the first one to preach the gospel when he told Adam. And I think, it was it the verse 20 of chapter 3? Bible says that, listen, uh, before I just, let me just say this and go. Watch this, watch this. Verse 15, verse 15. Genesis 3, 15, please allow me to say this. This is important. Verse 15 says that, watch this, watch this. This is interesting. God told them that the day you eat this thing, you will die. So when they ate it, Adam knew that death has come. But God comes and he says that, and I'll put enmity between you uh, and, and in between, between you and the woman, and between your seed, and what? And what? Seed. I can't hear you. And what? Seed. So, God tells them, no, don't worry. You will live to have seed. You should be dying. No, but God, you're going to have seed. A dying person, you are going to have seed. Someone in coma cannot get pregnant, can he? You are, you are dying. So you can't be promised a seed because you are dying. You are dying. But God comes to talk about seed. Seed is a sign of life for the future. And so that's the first gospel. No judgment. He said, seed. The woman will have a seed. She will live. So Adam, verse 20, Adam said, (laughs) verse 20 says that, and Adam called his wife Eve because she was the mother of all living, not all dead. Adam began to speak the language of faith because God has given them hope. God has told him, if means that living. Living. So 
Adam called the wife Eve because she's going to be the mother of all the dead? No, we are supposed to be dead. No, but because of the gospel, we will live. So the gospel brings life. Many people think that when you come to church, they will tell you that, ah, hey, hey, go and break up with your boyfriend before you go to hell. No, no, it's not necessary. That's not what you know. What we will tell you is come to Jesus for life. He will give you life. And then you will have the life sense and the life strength to do what you have to do. Yes. But pastor, <laughs> he don't know what I've done. Even yesterday, if he knew where I was and the things I was... <laughs> if he knew how much porn I was watching yesterday... <laughs> and you're telling me God can forgive me. God can forgive you not because of what you haven't done. Or you have done. He, he can forgive you because of Christ. That is the gospel. Amen. This is very important. And I will always keep reiterating and emphasizing it because for some reason, religion makes you think that you have to do something. You have to do something, you know. The way, the way you have committed so much sin, you have to suffer at least a little bit. You have to do, do, do something. So religion puts the responsibility on your works. While spirituality puts the responsibility on his works, but on your faith. If you can put your faith in his works, God said, gotcha, it's done. Satan said, no, it's unfair. It's fair. Because Jesus suffered for her. Jesus suffered. Pastor, I've committed so many evils. I took my, my closest friend, I lied against her and took her husband and married him. You don't know what I've done. I've done, oh, I've done so many evil things. I've changed figures. In fact, I've murdered seven people. The police has not found me out. Maybe one day they will. But it doesn't mean God can forgive you. Those are two separate things. Your eternal destiny is only in Christ. If you can say yes to Christ, you will be saved. <laughs> I'm not saying the police will not come after you. That one is a different story. Yeah. It's a different story. If you didn't write the exams and you failed, and you are not getting a job, once you become born again, it doesn't mean suddenly all the exams you have failed will be converted into passes. No, it doesn't happen like that. That one is you and the examiners and the uh, uh, institution. You have to go and sort it out. But so long as God and you are concerned, you are saved. If you die, you are going to heaven. You are a child of God as you are on earth. And the blessings of God begin to follow you. So where you were failing, God can bless you so that you now go and write another exam and pass. <laughs> but the one you have failed, you're not going to convert it into a pass. No, he will bless you to write another exam. <laughs> Amen, let me, let me, let me. So, we preach because, we have to preach the gospel because hell is real, and then church must be filled. How many of you think it's a good idea to be in church? Luke chapter 14, verse 23 says that, go out and preach the gospel, or preach to them, invite them. Let's all read it from the screen. Let's go. Then... And the hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be full. What anytime you see God's house in the Bible, what does that mean? Church. I can't hear you. Church. Some of you are not sure. Church. First, first, okay, let me we'll come back. First, uh, first Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. I just 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 for you to see it. First Timothy 3 15. But if I, I delay, I write so that you may know how to conduct yourself in the house of God, which is what? All right, so God's house is the church. Back to Luke chapter 14, verse 23. He says that, go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them, compel them, compel them to come in. Someone shall come in. Amen. Shall come in. Amen. Why? That my house may be filled. The church, there shouldn't be empty chairs in church. God's plan is that there shouldn't be empty chairs in church. The place must be filled. Why? Because God takes precedence in joining his people when we gather and coming to do things. I was sharing yesterday that God is the God of the gathering of the people. When we gather, God has such an affinity towards gathering. 
When God's people come together, that is when, oh, I can stay in my house and pray and God will equally bless me. You don't understand scripture. When we gather, his presence is guaranteed. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in their midst. For where two, this Jesus is talking, for where two or three, it's not the crowd, but gathering is there. God is the God of the gathering unto his name. When we gather, he shows up. And so he says that go and get people to come to where I am showing up. How many of you, since you started coming to church, you can see your life has changed from worse to better and better? How many of you? It's amazing. It's a true story. In fact, last, last Friday, Darren, rush your feet, please. Last Friday after the service, his work, he's very demanding. He travels very, very far. Travels very, very far. And Monday to Friday, every day traveling. So Friday, when we finished the service, I, I saw him. He came to say hello. I said, I can tell you are naked. He said, yes, but oh, it was worth coming. No, 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 he doesn't need a mic. Thank you. <laughs> it was worth coming. It's made my... It, what? Okay, you will need a mic. <laughs> you are in the spirit. What, you said something about, it's there's something of the highlight of your, week. what, what so, do you say? I said after the week I've had, it's just one. Is that what? It's exactly what I need. Yes. Exactly what, after the week, the kind of week you have had, service, the service was exactly what he needed. You would say, it's been a, too, too, I'm too tired, ha, ah, I need to go and watch some, um, uh, what, East Enders, and relax my brains. He said, after I've had such a, tough week mm. traveling and I'm sure the nature of your work too must be very demanding. very demanding and it comes to Friday evening service which closes at midnight <laughs> from seven and then you, you, are, you are saying it's exactly what I needed listen there is thank you sit down there is something in church for you tell someone there's something in church for you what you don't know you don't miss some of you have been to all kinds of churches so you didn't go to a church where Christ is working when Christ shows up, there's something. Something enters your spirit. Yes. Yes. You, come, you can come to church in a one state, but by the time the service oh. is over, you've, oh. yeah, yeah. you feel Satan, bring it on now. Satan, bring it on now. Am I speaking to somebody here at all? Yes. Do I have a witness in the house? Yes. We have wonderful young men here, young women here, wonderful old men here, old women here who have lived all kinds of life. Some of us arrived in church and realized that you should have been in church earlier. Is that not what you said some time ago? Is that not what you told me? He said, I don't know why I wasn't in church earlier. It would have saved him a lot of natural issues. Because you may think you're enjoying your life, but you are destroying your life. Sometimes, we, it's, 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 the problem is that it's, it's not just the Bible say, the Bible say, the Bible say, but we, there's a lot of common sense in church. Yes. By the time you stay in church a little while, you know that a gentleman meeting you at the, night, uh, at, at the party telling that, sister, I like you so much, you know that it doesn't mean much. Because yes. now you are a bit wiser. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Yeah. How many of you since you came to church realized that your life has become far better? Yes. Wiser? Wiser? Yes. Smarter? Yes. Smarter? Yes. Some of you, if you are in church earlier, you wouldn't have divorced. Mm. Oh yeah. Because what led to the divorce was something so trivial. Something so trivial because your wife said, your wife said, I do not want to see you talking to your friend's wife. And that makes sense. She was not sure. That's a, but he said, no, what do you mean? What do you mean? Okay, let's get our lawyers if I know you are divorced. Ah! With three children. And so, if you were in church earlier, you wouldn't have made some of the decisions you made. So the reason why we go out is that people must come to church. How many of you believe that people must come to church? Those of you who are here for the first time. <laughs> You are just the best. You are just the best. Please, let's clap for them. You, 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 you are just the best. Let me give you one more reason. Is that okay? Yes. Why you should pray the gospel? I think I will leave there. 
One more reason. The reason why you should preach the gospel, I like this. This, this is a very powerful one. I have been waiting to talk about this. So I will leave. The rest will deal with it in K group. The reason why, oh, I think I should give you two. Let me give you this right. The re- reward, say reward. reward. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25 says that there is a reward. And everyone who com- competes for the for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we, we, the word we there, we who are working for God, we for an imperishable crown. There is a crown ahead. And in in, um, Philippians chapter four, verse one, Philippians chapter four, verse one, and first Thessalonians chapter two, verse 19, Philippians four, one says that, therefore my beloved and, uh, beloved and longed for brethren. My joy and crown. He's calling the people he has preached to, you are my joy and you are my crown. Who? Christian sister. Who would you be able to say at the coming of Christ that they are your joy and they are your crown? Hmm. Who would you be able to say that this is my crown? This is my, you have left it for pastor. No. Preaching is not a pastor. Preaching to unbelievers is not the pastor's job. As I said last two weeks, that sheep and shepherd, who is supposed to give birth to sheep? Is it the shepherd that gives birth to sheep? Is it not the sheep that gives birth to sheep? So it's sheep that begats sheep, not shepherd begotten sheep. Shepherd is supposed to take care of the sheep. So when I stand here as a pastor, and my job is to take care of the sheep, but the sheep are supposed to give birth to sheep. This is interesting. So you, this is serious. A time is coming when you will stand before the judgment seat of Christ and you will hear him say that, well done, because these people are your crown and your joy. Wow. That's why we go out preaching the gospel. Yes. Wow. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 19. First Thessalonians chapter 2. He said, for, for what is our hope or joy, our crown of rejoicing, is it not even you? in the presence of the, our Lord. You are our hope. You are our joy. You are our crown of rejoicing when Christ appears. Tell someone, preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Are you afraid to say it? Say, preach the gospel. For crown. God has got a crown for those who preach the gospel. Those who win souls. There is a crown. There is a crown. God will reward you. God is not unrighteous to forget your labor of love. God is a rewarder. God is a rewarder. God is a rewarder. God will reward you. You, He said you are uh, our crown. You are our joy and the rejoicing of our soul. Then last point. When you preach the gospel, point number what? When you preach the gospel, healing goes with preaching the gospel. Healings. Oh my God, I feel that thing. He says that, and they went everywhere preaching. Mark chapter 16, verse 20. They went everywhere preaching. Preaching. The Lord working with them confirming the word with sign, with accompanying signs. So when they went preaching, it gave God opportunity to confirm what they were preaching with accompanying signs. They went preaching. So if you don't went preaching, <laughs> how can God confirm his word? With accompanying signs. He confirms, oh! he con- Bible says that God, the Lord was working with them. Say working with them. Working with them. Working with them. The Lord was working with them. The Lord was working with them. Confirming and confirming. How was he working? His business was to confirm. So how was God working with them? Uh, So let's say I'm God. Okay, and I'm working with him. So when he speaks, he's speaking, just just walk near me, just speak. And then God confirms what they see. 
Then, so that's how said, God confirms it. God confirms it. God confirms it. God co- so God is just back- backing what they are saying. So if you don't say it, he can't confirm anything. He has to work with you as you preach. When you preach, God is working with you. When you preach, God is working with you. Tell someone, preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. God working with them, confirming his word or confirming the word with accompanying signs. Because you can't see God, but his signs will let you know that this one is God. Because <laughs> he said, Rabbi, we know you are a man sent from God. For no one can do these things you do, the miracles you do, the works you do, except God be with him. In John chapter 3, verse 2. Rabbi! Rabbi! We know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs. Say signs. Signs. No one can do these signs that you do unless God. This must be God. Listen. He said God working with them. Confirming the word. Confirming the word. Confirming the word. Pastor, preach the word. It is only the word preach that God confirms. <laughs> Let's finish this. So, when you preach, healing and preaching go together. Yes. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. The mighty healer, he cleansed the lips. How God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost and power who, who went about doing good. In Mark, Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, these are just two scriptures, three scriptures to back there, then I'll end. What does it say? Jesus went about all Galilee, doing what? Teaching in their synagogues, Preaching the gospel of the kingdom and what? That's why when we go on the streets or anywhere we are preaching, when someone tells us they are sick, we pray for them. Because healing goes with preaching. The healing less preaching, I really wonder how much God is backing it. Because other than that, it also ends up becoming ideologies. Proponents of I, religious ideologies. Now, Ma- Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. Matthew 9, 35, what does it say? Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sick and every disease. Did you see that? It was teaching, preaching, and healing. They go together. Finally, Matthew chapter 11, verse 5. The blind, okay, this is when they came and asked him, who are you? Are you the one to come? He said, the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the uh, the, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Simple. Simple. These are all package of the kingdom of God in manifestation. So why are we supposed to preach the gospel? Because when you preach, preaching goes with healing. If you don't preach, someone may stay sick. Maybe some of us may not know. It's not every sickness doctors can heal. It's not every sickness doctors can heal. But God can heal every sickness, including terminal cancer, including HIV, including STDs, Whatever sickness it is, God can heal. And as we go out preaching the gospel, God said, now, once you have preached, now allow me to also back it Amen. with signs and wonders for it. So that's why we have to preach the gospel, because someone's healing is at stake. Amen. We have to preach the gospel. This Saturday, as we go, yeah. preach. Yeah. No, don't wait till Saturday. Whilst you're on the street, whilst you're home, anyone, you see, God will lead you, preach to them. And when you preach to them, ask them, are you sick? Is there a situation in your body you need healing for? And then believe God. You, listen, pray for them. If they say nothing has changed, you didn't make them sick anyway. You are trying to help them. <laughs> Who is the healer? Jesus is the healer. We are the preachers. And we preach and pray, and then he does the healing by backing us in Jesus' name. So how many of you understand that it is necessary to preach the gospel? God himself preached the gospel to save lives. But fundamentally, it's about salvation. But when you preach the gospel, there are so many benefits that come to it. The rest will take care of it in K-Group, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
We thank God for using his servant, Reverend Dr. David Entry, to share this awesome word. If this message has blessed you in any way, please spread the word by sharing it and send us an email to amen at caris.org. Remember to stay connected with us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and Twitter for regular updates on what God is doing here at Caris Ministries. Stay blessed.